also want to thank the organizers. This, this is one of my favorite meetings as well. Uh, there's my disclosure. Um, so, uh, my summary for the community. So, um, what we're uh, trying to do is, um, first, I, I didn't see the autometrist, because uh, this is hard to see, um, <laughs> is to uh, uh, improve the HIV-specific T-cell immune response uh, as part of the effort uh, to develop the tools to control HIV replication in the absence of art. Um, what I'm hoping I'm going to show you is that um, we just finished a clinical trial and we're just starting to analyze it, but um, I'm going to show you, I think, an example where we can correlate improved immune response with um, control after an ATI. Um, and so why this is important, because you're trying to come up with correlation between what can lead to control virus uh, post-analytical post treatment eruption um, is it, important, because once we get some tools that work together, then we can eventually combine them and hopefully get very durable responses. Um, and so I'm very excited about this, because um, uh, the trial we're about to start uh, sort of builds upon this trial, and I'm uh, optimistic that we'll even get better responses in the next trial. Um, and so um, it, there's been many attempts to um, treat very early uh, before, in the, in the thought that you could uh, treat before the reservoirs are established. Um, and uh, while there has been some very delayed viral um, uh, uh, comeback, uh, it has all come back except for in the, uh, the patients that we talked about early, Timothy Brown in London and Dussel patients where they've had uh, uh, stem, stem cell transplants. Um, but what I would like to make the case, um, it, it may be a little contrast to what Cass said, is that, um, you know, we need better T-cells. Um, and I always use this example of Robocop, right? So when, when the bad gangs of Detroit first came through, poor little Alex Murphy, he got, he got, he got obliterated. Um, and then when they rebuilt him and gave him really good armor and a really bad weapon, he was able now to beat the bad gangs. And I think that is a great analogy for what's going to happen in HIV, is that the first time that uh, the T-cells see HIV, it, it's, it, they try, but they ultimately lose. And so if we're going to come back in, we should try to come back in with something that's better equipped to control the infection. So um, I'm going to build upon a study that was done several years ago. So this actually was the first gene editing study done in, in humans in which a, um, we've, we, we've all heard about the CCR5 zinc finger nucleases. Um, they were, um, you know, taken out of somebody, the zinc fingers were added, the cells were expanded, um, and then they were put back in. And there's just a couple things I just want to point out where, you know, this would differ from what's been done in the stem cell transplants. Um, our efficiency isn't all that great. Um, and so, you know, maybe only, let's call it 10% because it makes the math easier for me, are defective. And we're only putting in, you know, 10 billion, so only 1 billion cells are actually resistant. And they're going into a sea of cells that's, you know, 600 billion, right? So the number of resistant cells is very small compared to the number of CCR5 positive cells. So we're not stopping the spread of infection. There's plenty of places for HIV to go, um, which is why we were really surprised to get the result that we initially got. Um, and, and what you see here is very typically, you know, after a couple weeks, the virus starts going up. Um, See, Mike, you can actually use the pointer, and you don't have to stand next to the screen. Um, and so the, the virus goes up, and um, the, but in most cases, it came down about a log and a half. And then um, in this particular individual in the green, we saw that the virus went up, and then, you know, at 112 days afterwards, it was below the level of detection. Um, and what we didn't know at the time, but later found out later, is that this particular individual was a Delta 32 heterozygote. So one of his alleles was already disrupted. Um, and so this, again, we, we had to put him back on ARC because of the way we wrote the trial. Uh, but this gave us, maybe there's something else going on here that was different from stopping the spread. Maybe there was some dominant control of the virus. And so we set up a, 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 another trial um, in which we, you know, 
we designed it so we could ask some of these questions in a more focused way. Um, and in the previous trial, we did see a correlation between the number of disrupted alleles and the amount of decrease in viral load after it was set. And so the thought was, well, if we could do more things to get more cells in, could we potentiate this effect? And so we tried a couple of different things that I'll gloss over. Uh, one was to use um, RNA um, as a way to deliver the ZFN as opposed to adenoviral vector. And so the FDA first made us do a cohort just using the RNA uh, just to show that we worked as well as the ad vector. And then the, perhaps the more interesting two um, cohorts were individuals who were wild type for CCR5, and they got treated with one of two doses of cytoxan uh, to, as, as Kath was saying, lipodepletion creates more space for the adoptively transferred T cells to go in. And then we were able to find um, five delta-32 heterozygotes who were also willing to come into the trial that we could then try to see could we recapitulate uh, what we saw in that first patient. Um, so I include this uh, you know, more for the social science to be honest with you because uh, you know, these were all well-controlled individuals, but what really strikes out to me is we really tried to increase the number of women to participate, and it was very challenging. Um, both for, uh, you know, because there is a lot of bleeding in this, and um, so 13 of the 14 participants were, uh, were men. Um, and I don't really have great answers on how we can get more women on these trials, because it's, we really did make a very concerted effort here. Uh, I guess it, it, it contrasts to uh, some of the other issues, we actually did get a quite number, a good ratio between uh, black and white participants uh, to be as part of the trial. Um, and so, um, just first, uh, simple things. Uh, if you use the, 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 the RNA to deliver this event compared to the AD5, we got comparable levels of disruption. Um, and so this, was, this is the sort of the, um, the trial. It looks complicated, but it really isn't all that complicated. Um, you know, we, we took several apheresis for manufacturing, and this apheresis number two here will be important later on, but this is before anything was done in terms of the actual trial. So this is a baseline. Uh, the cells were manufactured, the cytoxan was given two days before the cell infusion, um, and then the cells were able to sort of engraft for a while, and then we started the analytical treatment interruption. Um, and then once the ATI was over, so if any of had a low viral load, um, they were given the option to go past 16 weeks. Uh, because that's what hurt us the first time, is that we said, at 16 weeks, you have to start taking your medicine again. Here, we leave it up to the doctor um, and the patient to see, would they be willing to go a little bit longer? Um, and then after they started their ATI, uh, we had six months of uh, where they controlled, and then we did one more apheresis at the end so that we could study the effect of the infusion in a more steady state um, scenario. Uh, so some quick things here, so, um, and I apologize, the, there is a black lines here, and you can't see that, can you? Um, there are some black lines in this graph here, so like this one right here, this is without the cytoxan, this one and this one. Uh, and, and overall, the cytoxan did help the engraftment. Uh, and again, this has been shown in the, uh, the cancer field quite a bit. A bit. The, the amount of cytoxan we were losing, it was generally well tolerated. Uh, no one lost their hair, nobody got terribly sick. Um, and in some of the individuals, it was, you know, we got quite, so this is 20% of the cells. Uh, but most of the patients came down, you get this, you know, order that, um, uh, John Zay showed earlier, but we're, we're able to maintain very long term. So even from the first cohort that we did 10 years ago, uh, the, the, the cells are present. I mean, th these are very long lasting, durable cells. So, you know, like the, for the, many of them are at 5% of their, of, of the total number of CD4 cells. Um, and so at least in this setting, the way these cells are made, we get very durable persistence of these T cells. Um, and now if we look at the uh, ATI uh, data, so um, this is in the three different cohorts. Um, and as a control, we use the ACGT, that gunner ATIs. Um, I'm very excited that the uh, NIH is now doing an ATI study uh, that hopefully can be um, 
you know, using more modern medicine and would be a great control group for all these type of studies. Um, but you can see that, um, you know, each of these cohorts did a little bit better. This is a combination here. Uh, again, you know, there's a difference, but it's certainly not saying that a cure is anytime near soon with this. Um, but where this gets, I think, a little interesting is we, st we started looking at the HIV-specific immune response. And so, you know, we're introducing CD4 cells. CD4 cells are called helper cells because they're called helper cells because they help immune responses. Um, and there's been a few studies that have looked at, you know, what, what happens to the HIV specific immune response after an ATI, right? So the patient is suppressed for a long time. You take them off their medicine, and now, you've, now antigen is present. So you, in principle, you should regenerate the HIV specific immune response. Uh, but what happens is, as you can see here, you know, there is a little bit of a bump, but then once they start the medicine again, it basically goes down to baseline. So there seems to be no long-term benefit of the ATI in terms of restoring or potentiating immune responses. Um, however, when we looked, we saw several cases where we saw pretty dramatic improvement. So uh, this is one patient right here, number 303. This is one particular pool, uh, gag pool. And, and you can see pre-infusion, there, there is some cells there, but again, you know, this is six months after the re, uh, um, reinitiation of ART, right? So the virus is long gone, these are the cells that are remaining, and you see quite an event expansion of these cells. So this is total CD8 cells. So in this one pool, 1.44% of the total CD8 cells are recognizing it. Um, and Got to thank my student Colby for teaching me about heat maps. Um, but this is all the patients' rank order. So this 303 had the best, all the way down to this person. And changes in color, you can kind of go on the scale here. But these are not subtle changes. I mean, these are based on percent of total cells. And you can see these top three patients here really, had, you know, had this one had the very strong one, but there's a number of new responses that were created that seem to be sustained in, in these top three. Uh, whereas these individuals down here are more similar to what people have seen in, in other studies, where there's a few bleeps here and there, but generally no uh, demonstrative change in the immune response. Uh, and so now if we look at the ATI data a little bit more carefully, right? So uh, the way it's originally tracked is, you know, time the viral rebound, right? And there has been a great debate in the field, you know, when should you reinitiate therapy after an ATI. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you a couple of interesting examples here. So this uh, red, number 203, uh, so he or she had quite a demonstrative uh, a return to viremia. Um, but what you see over the next several weeks is it goes back down to almost undetectable, right? And so had our criteria said after you hit 50,000 um, viral load, you start therapy, we would have completely missed this in, in terms of analyzing these patients. And you kind of see there's, you know, it goes down, then it goes up again, and then, you know, ART was started. But, you know, we're 26 weeks out here when ART was finally given back in again. Um, these other individuals are, are a little bit different. Again, they all had a spike upward. This guy went down, back, up back and then finally our, you know, but this person could have stayed on according to our rules, just he and his physician thought this was long enough and he wanted to go back on his meds. Um, and then, you know, same with this blue guy. So the three individuals here, those are the exact same three individuals that got the boost in their immune response, right? And so it suggests that there is a, a battle, if you will, uh, between these new and improved immune responses and keeping the virus from going uh, logarithmic during the ATI. Um, and so, to me, this really suggests that, um, you know, again, this is, you know, we didn't actually see any improvement in the CD4 T cell response, which was interesting. Um, but the CD8 cell response uh, did go up, and only the three individuals got the better response were able to have these, you know, extended ATIs. Um, another interesting came out, um, 
not sure what it has to do with the therapy, but it was very interesting to us. Um, so we used the um, Acelevir, the company that um, Bob described to do the IPD assay, um, and very consistent with other treatment interruption uh, type experiments, we didn't really see any noticeable change in the reservoir before and afterwards. But what we did observe is all the individuals in the orange here, those are your Delta 32 heterozygotes. And this is on a log scale, right? So all the Delta 32 heterozygotes had much lower reservoirs than the CCR5 wild type, um, which, you know, may make some sense, but we were very surprised in terms of the difference of the reservoir in these. And obviously we need to do more patients. And, and I don't know if Bob's looked at this yet in his cohort, but I think it, it would be, you know, so I wonder if those really, those people that have very low reservoirs that you did look, you know, could they have been Delta 32 heterozygotes? Um, and so just to summarize this part of it, um, you know, it's safely feasible. Uh, we did see a, a slight delay in the viral rebound these cells um, do engraft well. Um, the cytoxan did help the engraftment, um, but whether it's worth the extra effort could be debated. Um, the most stunning thing, at least to me, was the improved sustained CD8 T cell responses you see six months after the antigen was removed, and this correlated with a, uh, the ability to control the virus during the ATI. Um, and at least in terms of the reservoir, it seemed to be uh, a neutral event. All right, so the other part of the sub I think that I'll go through very quickly, Hans Peter, because <laughs> there's only two slides, um, is, is the arm. And so this is the car we're currently using, and this has CD4 because it's a natural ligand with 41B and the zeta chain. Um, and so the first thing I just want to highlight is um, here we've you know, use the natural targeting receptor. So these are all TCRs that recognize um, uh, well, well known and well studied epitopes in the um, HLA2 restriction. And you can see, you know, at one to one ratios, um, one, you know, sort of get the Levy effect here because we have so many uh, CD8 T cells in here. Um, but you see some control at one to five, it's a little bit more apparent that, you know, these Paul ones don't do anything. The SL9 and KF11, you see some control. Uh, and then here we've mixed everybody together and, you know, you get subcontrol. But as you kind of go down, you know, the CAR T cells are really good. Um, and they're much more um, ability to control the virus replication than what we say would be TCR-based approaches. Um, so Colby Montini is here and he's presenting this poster. Um, and just to quickly go the, over this, although he'll do a much better job than I will, is, you know, we studied the CD4 cells in the CD4 car, and that is a bit of a tongue twister. But what, what we were surprised to see is that the CD4 cells could actually kill quite well. Um, and so you know, here we've got a, you know, really effective cells, and we did a very short 24-hour uh, incubation. And, you know, at relatively high ratios, we're able to kill quite well. Um, and we, we know that it's specific killing because if we look at active caspase 3 in these cells, we see that the target cells are expressing quite a bit of caspase 3. And now if we compare this to the CD8 cells, uh, what you can see here is that, yeah, the CD8 T cells do work a little bit better. So this is a 1 to 100 ratio. You know, we see with the form V signaling, the, the forwards get infected. But it's pretty damn close. Uh, maybe it's a two to four fold difference in potency. So we think the CD4 cells that we're including in our product will also be effective in addition to helping the, the other cells. I won't do that. Um, and so the CAR and CCR5 trial is underway right now. Uh, first apheresis is happening today. And so ho what I'm hoping for is that the combination of the CAR, which will make all the cells HIV specific, um, you know, if, if the thought is that sustained HIV immune response can delay the ATI, we would expect to see pretty nice results when we mix the CAR in with the CCR5 Z effects. And I just want to thank everybody. Um, Colby, who did some of the work here. Great work with Pablo, uh, Pam, and Julie to do the trials. Uh, Feed HIV, our U19, and our industry uh, partners. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jim. Are there questions? 
you see a difference in CCR5 and leak percentages during those blitz? Oh, sorry. Yeah, do you, do you see a difference in the percentage of CCR5 edited cells when you have high virus and low? Um, that's a good question. I don't know if we've looked at it, you know, again, it would be a relatively small number of the cells in there. Um, I don't recall, but we can certainly look if, there's a, if we see some changes in the persistence of those. Of the, or in your virus-specific yeah. cells. Yeah. Okay, maybe one more question. If not, then we'll move on. Thanks again. Sure.